that craziness. Anyhow, uh, I'm out here working on cushions for the van, so I thought I would take a few minutes and go live. Excuse the mess all behind me. I'm outdoors under the carport because working on the bed cushions for the van requires lots and lots and lots of space, which I actually don't have inside the house. So I'm out here. Hang on a second. I'm still not sure what's up with this stream. Hold on. Hang on. This out. Now it says reconnecting. Now it says live. Okay. I don't know. I don't know at all. But anyhow, I'm out here and I'm working on the cushions. Let me show you where I am. Just kind of catch you, catch you up. I've been doing stuff out here for a couple of days now, trying to get things done. So, to do the cushions for the van, obviously, you're going to need cushions. So, I got this foam. Actually, this is foam that I picked up last time I was in Alaska. So, I guess about, about two years ago, I guess, is when I picked it up. Believe it or not, they had it at Fred Meyer. I was so stoked. Because what I had in the van had gotten really, really thin. Because it's on the wooden platform. And those slats were getting old to sleep on. So, I was really glad to find this. And, Hey, I see I've got two watchers, so y'all go ahead and give me a like on the video, okay, on the stream. Because that would be great. Um, so the first thing you need, like I said, is the foam. Second thing, if you're going to cover your foam, you need fabric. And like I said, I've been working on this, so I'll show you where I am in just a minute. You also need a sewing machine. Good pair of scissors. Pin cushions helpful, because you're going to need pins. And the all-important Velcro, <laughs> which, of course, is both the hook loop and the soft side. So you've got two parts of that. So what I've done so far is I have measured the fabric because I want to have enough fabric to cover this. So the way I've done it is I've cut a rectangle piece that will wrap around the fabric this way. I'm just sewing it on the ends. Just a straight seam sewing down. So this is a really easy way to cover the cushion. Uh, it's not complicated, but I do want the opening going for down the full length of the cushion because with the problems that I'm having with my left arm and shoulder, it just makes a lot more sense to do it just as quickly and easily as possible when I go to take the covers off. I also want to make sure that those covers are washable so I can just take them off and throw them in the washing machine. So when you, that's important when you pick out your fabric. So I went to Hobby Lobby and found some fabric actually on clearance that was wide enough and fit the parameters. Now, if you cannot find the fabric that's wide enough, often it comes in like 45 inches for the width, sometimes 48. Occasionally you'll see 54, but that's mostly upholstery fabric. Um, so if you can't fine fabric that is the length you want. You can also use a heavy sheet. Um, I'm going to be sitting on this, obviously, and reading on it and lounging, but at night I'm going to have a blanket and sheets, sleeping bag, and so forth on top of it. So I really just wanted to make sure that the cloth was washable. And Hobby Lobby had it. It was like $5.99 a yard. Um, but then it was on sale for 30% off of that, so it made it a little more reasonable. But when you go in and you're picking out your fabric, make sure that you get some that's washable. And if you don't see a tag on there on the end of the bolt that says, like, how to wash it, um, ask. Because they may be able to pull another bolt or have some in the back or some way that they can look it up for you. So, real quick, let me show you what I've done so far which is to cut the fabric to the right size, get it where it will wrap around. I have sewn one end of this and one end only with just a straight seam. And that's the, that's the short end. The long end, I have gone and I have folded the cut edge. I'm going to demonstrate it over here for you. I folded, taken the cut edge, and I have folded it down twice, once, twice, and I have sewn that down 
to make a finished edge. Now on this finished edge, this is where I'm going to affix the Velcro. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut it and pin it down. But first, I am going to put this back on this piece of foam so I can show you all kind of how it goes. Also, um, this is a little longer than what I need. So I'm actually going to put it on there and measure it to trim it. So I'm going to turn it to where it is right side out. Poke my finger in the corners. All right, arm, move. And if you're going to do van life, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you straight up, you're going to need some DIY skills. You don't need to, you know, start a channel or anything like that, but you're going to need some basic skills. All right, so foam. And I'm going to put this finished part on the end. And the, the interesting thing about foam is it wants to grab your fabric. So just kind of be aware of that because you may have a harder time moving it around on your foam than you think you're going to. Which is why I am putting the Velcro lengthwise instead of on the short end. Because it's just a lot easier when you go to take it off and put it on. I hope y'all are doing well tonight that are following me here watching the live stream. I had a little bit of time since I was out here and I thought, why not? I just check in with y'all. So, all right. So I have my two seams cut and turned over to make the hem, like I showed you, and I have the end cut. Now the other end, I'm looking, it really is way too long down here. So I'm gonna, I'm going to cut this right now to the length I need. Um, I thought I had it cut a little while ago, but I mismeasured in a big way. Um, and I'll tell you where part of that came in. Uh, the bed that we're making for the van, we actually shortened from what it was. So I needed a shorter piece. But when I cut the material originally, I didn't allow for having to go back in and cut that foam to shorten it. So there I am. So I got to fix that. It's real easy to fix. Just going to come down here, get the right length. And honestly, I will tell you, if you do not have great math skills, like I do not, it's okay because you can measure right on this by just holding the fabric and kind of eyeballing it. So yeah, this is what I'm going to need, and that's about the eight inches. Okay. Good scissors are essential. If you don't have a good pair of scissors, and I'm not necessarily talking high dollar scissors here, but just scissors that will cut well. If you don't have them, it's worth the investment. Because you want to have the right tool for the job. And having a good pair of cloth cutting scissors is essential. It is your right tool for the job. And I'm not too worried about this being exactly straight. But I am using the edge of the table to go by. And I am going to have a raw edge on this end. But don't worry, I'll go back and put a seam in that. finish it up nice. You never want to have completely raw edges. You always want to make sure you have a good hem. The more raw edges you have, the more likely you are to have raveling. And believe me, you don't want to be in the middle of nowhere and having raveling going on. So, yeah, there's the eight inches I should have cut off earlier, or I guess actually 10. I'm going to put this aside because you never know when you're going to want something, you know, a little scrap piece uh, for something later on down the road. So until your project is completely finished, whether you're talking about a van build or just sewing 
a craft project inside the house, keep all of your material until you are fully certain that you are done with it, okay? Much easier to do that than to try going to the fabric store and hoping they have that exact material in stock again because, let's just face it, we don't always get lucky like that. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to put this over here. And now I'm going to put the Velcro down. So let me adjust. Let me adjust this camera. I'm going to check for comments first. Okay, I'll see comments. So I'm going to adjust this down so you can see it. Can you see it? Whoops. There you are. Okay. So on this material where I have already done the hem, this is where I'm going to put the Velcro on both sides so I can just Velcro that down together. This is really simple to do this way. Um, you can get super fancy and super complicated by making an exact fit. Um, but this, for me, is good enough because I want a little extra motion just because sometimes this left arm doesn't do what it's supposed to. And a little extra motion is helpful. If you want yours to fit tighter, just cut the material a little, little shorter. So, all right. I got, I ordered this off of Amazon. It is extra long on the Velcro. It's commercial and it is supposed to be durable and reusable. Both are which, of which are important. Uh, the reusable part, I wanted something that wouldn't build up a memory over time. So if I ever want to cut this, and make multiple cushions, I can still use this Velcro. So all I'm doing here, I made the hem wide enough that I could put this on and have space on either edge. So all I'm gonna do is go through and pin it. And this is the part that always takes forever. And I have to say, I feel so much better to be able to get back to these videos now. Life has been crazy, as you know. And then, what is it, two weeks from tomorrow, I get to go get my service dog? Totally, totally, totally crazy. Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm putting these pins in. If you sew, you're probably already familiar with this, and it's going to be, like, repetitive stuff here. If you don't sew, this may be helpful for you. Ow. Okay. So what I'm doing, let me come down here a little bit more. It'll be easier for you to see. So when I put the pins in, I am putting them crossways of the hem. And this is important because when you go to sew, you can sew directly on top of the pins without them getting in the way. Otherwise, um, if you put them in lengthwise like this, then you're going to not be able to sew over them. You're going to have to keep taking this out. So when you put the Velcro on with your pins to get ready to sew, make sure you put it crossway, okay? It just makes life easier. But like I said, if you're used to sewing, you already know that. The other thing that you can do if you don't want to use a machine is you can just whip stitch this or hand sew it on. That's acceptable also. Depending on your machine, you might have to do it that way. But whatever you do, here's a big no-no. When you go to make cushions for your van and you're covering the cushions, do not use this product called hem tape h-e-m-t-a-t-e hem tape is a wonderful prod product don't get me wrong you just simply you put it take your fabric put it down fold it over and iron it on it's a great product
product, it is not great for vans because what happens is over time, and whether it's two weeks, two months, or two years, you just, there's no way to know. But that heat tape in that bonding releases, and you are left with a sticky, gooey mess. Same thing when it comes to your Velcro. Don't use the Velcro that just sticks on. Again, it's a wonderful product. It's got a lot of great applications. The van is not one of them. We thought we were being all clever and making covers for the windows, window shades for the van, which I actually need to make another one of. But, from Lowe's, we got out into the desert southwest. The first year, they held up fine. The second time we went out for vacation, they all started falling down. They just could not hold up to the heat. Because as you know, whatever the heat is outside is hotter than that in your van. Unless you have good air conditioning running and the fan and so forth. Which I do, but it's still hot. I've got a lot of travel coming up, and we've got the RV, but I'm trying to get the van ready to go, too. Because I'm going to be in it, so it looks like. So, are you, what, what kind of travel do you all have planned? Anything, or are you going to stay close to home? I wouldn't have this much travel scheduled if I didn't have to. Not with gas prices the way they are. Okay, I'm not going all the way down to the end of the fabric with this because I've got to leave space for the hem and to sew that together. So I'm cutting it about four inches from the very end. Alright, so that's not bad. That's, that level is done. Let me make sure I roll this back up. And y'all who are in here, don't forget, do give me a big thumbs up on this, okay? That helps so much with algorithms. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. So, yeah, I've, we've had to do some emergency travel earlier this month. I became a grandmother unexpectedly. Well, I shouldn't say unexpectedly. I knew I was going to be a, granddaddy, a grandmother, but the baby girl was due in August. She just decided to come in May. I've got some videos on that. She's doing really good, though. But that led to an unplanned trip to the Southwest. So, then I'm home. I have a mandatory conference that my husband has to go to over in North Carolina. And then we're leaving that conference in North Carolina to go to Kansas. And in Kansas, my service dog is waiting on me. Then we're going to come back. And then we're going to follow our original plan of being home for a couple of weeks and then um, going out to help with grandbaby. So since we already had vacation time and everything scheduled for my husband, we're going to take off and do that. But part of the time I'm going to be in the van and part of the time we'll be in the RV. So, RV out to Kansas and probably the van out to my daughter's, which will be good. Um, I like the van. It is maneuverable, and I just love it. So, okay, I'm getting ready to put this next row of Velcro on here, and that is going just on the other hem here. I have to make sure that I match the edges together. The, I'm sorry, the ends together. That way I know I'll have a good fit. Ah. Ow. Okay, don't do that. 
I'm actually going to, there we go, pull this back a little bit and get me some light. Um, but it is important if you're going to do van life to have some, whoops, it's already sticking together, whoops, to have some of the DIY skills because you're, you're going to need it. Even if you don't do the build yourself, there are always going to be little things that you want to do. And you can't always afford to have somebody just do these things for you. Although you can outsource it, certainly. Yeah. We could have, we would have probably had to hire some help with the solar had some YouTubers not been fabulous to help us with it. Um, and that was Amber and John Rivers. Both of them just a wealth of knowledge. But yeah, you can, you can outsource everything. Um, I've seen where people have advertised for other people to help build them a bed for the van. But honestly, there are, if you have the tools and the time and just a little bit of DIY skills, there are so many videos online that will help you out that that's really the thing to do. Because once you develop that skill, you're never going to lose it. It's not going to be time wasted. Hmm. And sewing machines, um, you can get them used for not a whole lot of money. Um, I saw one advertised on Facebook the other day for 50 bucks. It looked like a pretty good machine. Um, but Amazon's usually got some pretty good prices. The big thing about sewing machines is to get one that's a recognized brand. I'm not saying you have to spend $5,000 on a sewing machine, but just get one that's a brand that you recognize. So. Singer, brother, you know. You know, if, if you're getting a sewing machine for $40 and it's coming from China and it's a brand that you've never heard of, you know, you have to question what their support might be like if you have a problem. And at some point, you may have a problem or question. I had a brother machine years ago. I could not get that thing threaded to save my life when I first bought it. So I wound up having to call brother and they, they talked me through it and it was, don't be shocked, it was, an, it was an operator error. We used to call that a picnic problem back in the early days of the internet, talking about like the mid 90s. P-I-C-N-I-C. Y'all know what that stands for? I'm almost afraid to tell you. I don't know. It's probably not still used anymore. But when somebody said it was a picnic problem, P-I-C-N-I-C, -I -I that meant the P, the problem, was in the chair, I see, not in I, the computer. So, problem in chair, not in computer. Of course, in that case, it was sewing machine. So. And again, on this, I am just putting these in, uh, the pins going in crossways again. Okay. I don't want to lose that bag. So, it, and on the tools, First my hand, then my name, good grief. Um, anyway, I mentioned the scissors a little while ago. You don't have to spend a lot of money on scissors to have good ones. Just make sure that after you get your scissors, you only use them on fabric. Otherwise, what happens is you go to cut and it will, it won't cut well. 
it'll tear or it'll put it into shreds, things like that. Um, you don't want to have glue stuff on it from where you've done other craft projects. So just, I think I paid four or five dollars for these. So not not a whole lot of money. I've had them for a couple of years now, three years I guess. Um, worth the investment. Worth it. Don't buy them at the Dollar Tree. Get get you a pair that's going to last a little while. And the good thing is, once you once you buy some of these tools, you know you've got them forever. And then let's say you do van life and you don't want your sewing machine anymore. Well, sell it. If you buy it used, chances are, you know, like a $50 sewing machine that I saw on Facebook the other day, I was looking, helping a friend look. And I told her, I said, if you buy it for $50 and you use it a while and take care of it, then once you're finished doing the projects or you decide to upgrade, you should be able to sell it and get your $50 out of it. So I think that's what she's going to do. Um, and of course, it's the same thing when we're talking about van life, talking about a van build. It's the same thing. Um, if it was a sewing machine or a saw, drill, you name it. Oh, the other thing is, right now, I have got the cover on the mattress in the same way it's going to be um, when I go to finish it off. On a lot of projects, you're going to want to turn it wrong side out when you go to do this part. Um, but for this particular, for this particular project, I didn't want to turn it wrong side out. I wanted to check placement of everything exactly. And so for that reason, I had it right side out. But here in a minute, when I go to take care of the very end of this piece, I will turn it wrong side out um, so I can sew it. Because that will put, if I, once I turn it wrong side out, that will put the seam going inside instead of going outside. So. And honestly, one of the things I like about this material is that you really can't tell front side to back side. So I didn't have to be as careful with it. That's not the same in all materials. Um, like, for example, this shirt. Right side, wrong side. And you've seen other clothes like this too. So I have the, the pattern. And you can see real plainly right side from wrong side. Where is this? It's basically the same. It's a small thing, but it just makes my life a little easier. Besides, like I said, it was on sale. But this was a good material to get on sale. You do have to watch, um, especially because you're doing van build, you want to make sure that your material is going to be durable. And this one does feel like it's going to be durable. It's a medium weight, so it's not real thin. It's not real thick. It's not super heavy like the duck cloth that I used on the window coverings. But I think it will hold up, and that's exactly what you want. So when you go to buy a material, feel of it. Pay attention to the washability of it. Don't get something that has to be dry cleaned because that's just a pain. Um, and, and kind of, I don't want to say like stand there and really pull, pull it apart, but pay attention to the give of the fabric and make sure you like what you're buying, especially if, like in this case, with it being on clearance, you just want to, pay, there's always a reason why something's on clearance. 
and you just want to make sure that what you're getting is appropriate for the task at hand. Another hint that will help you is when you are buying your pens, buy long ones. Don't buy really short ones because they're, they're more helpful for them to be long than for them to be short. Also, I like pens that have a head on them that you can really grip. Let me come around and show you what I'm talking about here. Okay? The head of this pen, I hope you can see that. You can see that it's, it's about the size of a small pencil eraser, but I'll say half the size of a pencil eraser. This gives you something to grip with when you're working on a product, project like this. Having something to grip with is really important and the length is also important. as opposed to this little number, which I have from quilting days. You can just barely see that. It's a lot shorter and the head is almost non-existent. So in terms of Velcro, what we have going on here is this pin, this tiny one, We'll just barely go across the Velcro. It is not going to hold fabric. This one goes across. I've got space to work with. It will hold fabric and Velcro really well, and that's why I'm using that. So if you can, whenever you go buy pins, try to get bigger ones that have a large head. These will stand you in better stead for most projects than will the teeny tiny ones. Like I said, I did this from my quilting days when I would piece like little tiny pieces of material for a quilt, uh, which I recently did, but they'll get you in problem when you're doing a bigger project. Little, little tidbit for you. I'm so glad that car horn isn't gone. And again, I want to make sure that this matches in length down here. So I'm matching it up really well. And for now. Yes, it's already starting to stick together, but I didn't intend for it to do that yet. You know what? One good thing did come of it. I need another pin there. over here for 
for a moment. Y'all have any questions about covering the cushions? I got myself into a pickle on this one. If you do have any questions, just go ahead and top them into the chat. I keep looking at the chat, looking up. If I should miss it, though, I'll try to catch it on replay. Or if you're seeing this on replay, go ahead and drop one in the comments. And if you all have not seen it yet, I'm doing, I did a video um, asking for people's input for dealing with gas prices. So do leave a comment there. I'm going to be putting a video together next week of people's comments. That way we can all learn from each other because we're all stuck with these crazy gas prices. So we may as well learn from each other how to deal with them, right? on top of each other it makes so much more sense. So this is where it's going to be just a little tricky. And that's because that's just the nature of the beast. Because what I want to do now is I want to test before I sew and make sure that this is fastened the way I'm going to want it fastened on the sides to make sure I don't have to make a size adjustment in the width. I don't think I will, but just in case, I always want to check. Then I want to turn it wrong side out so I can mark the hem on this. Then um, after I do that, I'll go inside and sew it all together. I'm not going to put that part on video. Um, I don't. I don't think you'll need it. If you do need to see it, you know, let me know. Drop a comment. But the most complicated thing is this part: getting it all fastened. I mean, getting it all pinned. Let me just make sure. Be very careful with this part when you do it because you've got your pins in there. And so it's not really well fastened. You don't want to, when you go to pull it apart, you don't want to just like rip it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. For the width, for what I want, this is absolutely perfect. Um, so now I've just got to undo the Velcro and flip it around and turn it put out. Whenever you go to pull it, don't just take the material and yank. Even after you sew it, it will last a lot longer. If you put your hands on the Velcro and you're a little more gentle with it. Actually, I'm getting kind of lucky here because since it grips onto the foam so well, it kind of almost turned itself wrong side out. And like I said, I got the I got the foam in Alaska at Fred Meyer. If you don't have a Fred Meyer, you can also look at places like Hobby Lobby. 
Joann's. Sometimes they have larger foam pieces. Um, you can get an egg crate mattress. I've heard of people doing that. And then fitted the two crates together because they're dimpled. So fit one going down, one going up. Fit those together. I've heard of people doing that. But if you are near a foam store, they are worth their weight in gold. They are like so cool. Because you can go into the foam store, which is what we did with our first fan build, and I told them what thickness, how, how large I wanted, what I was going to do with it, and they had everything all laid out on the, on the walls, on, on the different rolls, and they were able to help me get the right density that I wanted, which was really helpful. But that was back in 2015, so flash forward to 2019, um, even the best density foam after that many years exposed to heat and cold and those big temperature fluctuations, that starts to wear down. So, yes, worth their weight in gold. Okay. And I just found the one, um, I think it was Knoxville, just by searching foam rubber outlet on the internet. Back to my pins. Okay. I'm going to bring this in a little closer so I can see you better while we talk. Oh. Whoops. Pull you around this way a little bit more. There you are. And I see two people are still, are still hanging in, so thank you. Now, this material, I'm going to put the pins in just the same way I did on these. And that is, I'm going to put them straight in like that. I did not cut this as straight as I thought I did. But that's okay. It will work out. I'll just give it a, a spot check here. I think I'm going to be good. What a day, right? So I hope you all are having a good day. And I'll go ahead and tell you, we got some good news about Brianna, the grandbaby. She's, she's doing, she's doing better. Still has a long way to go, okay? But she is holding her own. She has not had any major Bells. She was having trouble um, getting her heartbeat to stay up, and so they've got a handle on that, which is really nice. Now, I've got a picture of her over on my Instagram. If y'all aren't following me on Instagram, you can you can do that. It's Instagram.com, always the foundation. And, of course, we're be bodacious because... You're not going to let life get in the way of living. May throw some curveballs. But we're going to go BS regardless, right?
Maybe I'm just putting the pen straight in. Okay, so now that I have this done, I'm just going to go over to the sewing machine, which is inside, and I'm just going to run the seam right through here, just one seam, and I'm going to run the seam down the center of the Velcro. So this is all I'm going to do out here for tonight. Uh, whoops, no it's not. I'm going to put one more pin in that. Um, had to do it outside because you need lots and lots of space. So I took my two six foot tables, pushed them together, and my cover over it is actually an old full, full size sheet that works great for this situation. Um, if you ever need to cover two tables, you got it also. Picnic tables, I will give you a hint, and that is if you have an old twin size sheet, that often fits perfectly on public picnic tables. You guys are just getting all kinds of tips tonight. There we go. All right. Okay. So I'll take that in and do that. And so that's all there is to it. Three seams. And this cushion cover is done. So what do y'all think? This is an easy cushion cover uh, to do relatively quick uh, compared to the, the more tightly fitted ones. <clears throat> of course, you do have the advantage on the more tightly fitted ones that it won't move around as much. But I need room to be able to maneuver um, the cushion in and out. So, there we go. So, all right, I'll go do that. And thank you all for watching uh do give me a big thumbs up on the live stream here ask any questions that you may have about making these just drop those in the comments below and i will see you all um saturday i was trying to say i'd have a video up friday but i may not i may not but regardless i will see you on saturday at 7 eastern right here on this channel we do always a Saturday night live stream at 7. Once in a while, we might have to roll over to Sunday if there's a holiday or something. But it's not a holiday this week, so I'll see you all Saturday night, okay? Take care. Have a great week. And always be bodacious. And again, that means you're not going to let life get in the way of living. So thanks for watching. Tell your friends and have a great week. Bye.